Okay, thank you everybody. We have Ray Ning, our partner at Unipro, the founder and CEO of Unipro Consulting Limited. <coughs> Uh, Hi. Hi guys. Up, buddy? What's up? Yeah, so yeah. we're here on the rooftop of the IFC. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful day. So we just had lunch and talked business and thought we would update a lot of people, clients and others are asking us, should I close my Hong Kong company? Is the climate happening today? Crazy, should I go to Singapore or somewhere else? So Ray and I were talking about it. I have some I have some points and uh, I'm gonna read them off and then Ray will uh, and I will comment on each. So, sure. Let's do this. Let's just take a walk too. Okay. All right. So the the first uh, first one is uh, the Greater Bay Area (GBA). Right. Um, Hong Kong is part of this initiative. And there's you know, if you're doing business with mainland China, I still think Hong Kong is a better place, of course, over Singapore or other options. Would you say? Well, yes. The uh, Greater Bay Area included. Uh, Many cities, and one of the cities, obviously, is Hong Kong. So they have more <coughs> measures and initiatives to help Hong Kong register business to do business in China. Yep. Well, while Singapore is located in Southeast Asia, so they are more close to ASEAN countries. So if you want to do business in China, I think Hong Kong is definitely still a better place because they. You got more uh, support from the government. Yeah. Okay. But then I guess a pro for Singapore would be if you're doing business in Southeast Asia, Thailand, Malaysia, other places that might be a better place for them. I think one of the greatest thing about Singapore is they have more uh, double taxation treaties signed with countries. Okay, the double taxation, true. Yeah. So and that means they wouldn't have to pay tax twice in the home country and, yes. and the Singapore. And that's correct. Okay, let's go to the next one. So the one I think is big is a lot of people like the offshore option in Hong Kong. There's also the offshore option in, in yeah, we'll go, sorry, we'll figure out where to go here. The uh, offshore, so some, uh, Hong Kong is a little bit maybe easier or some of the policies of the offshore claim in Hong Kong versus Singapore. I think you said the banking and if you'd actually use the Singaporean bank, you will uh, you will not be uh, yeah, able, yeah. able to use the offshore option in Singapore. Yeah, so for people who want to apply the offshore status, uh, something you got to be careful because uh, uh, if you have a Singapore company with a Singapore bank and then your customer pay to your Singapore bank account, then it will make your offshore status being uh, very difficult or even impossible. So, but in Hong Kong, you, <coughs> but in Hong Kong, there's no such a limitation. You can, uh, you have a Hong Kong bank and Hong Kong bank or overseas yeah. bank, it doesn't really affect your offshore status. Cool. Yeah. That's a big one. I think the other one I've we actually had a podcast a long time ago about this, but in Hong Kong is the local secretary requirement where in Singapore is local director and that's a bit of a difference in cost and, and, and other things, right? Right, I think you are talking about uh, in Singapore they require you to have a local director. Yeah, yeah. In the company structure. And uh, of course, uh, you may hear about normally directorship. That means you got somebody in Singapore, a local resident, to be a director, uh, but he's acting on behalf of your instruction. And but of course, this will cost you money. Yeah, and it's roughly around two thousand U.S. dollars in the mark in the market. Some people do lower price or some people do higher price. But then there's another additional requirement is that uh, usually the local resident will require you to pay them for a deposit. And that deposit is, uh, you, may, you, may, you may be curious why, why they would need a deposit. Because um, the director will take care of all of the uh, liability. Uh, if, somebody, if something goes wrong, then the director maybe they will go to jail or yeah. they need to uh, 
pay the penalty on behalf of the company, then this money will be uh, compensated for uh, the local to, to the local residents. So that means like a local Singaporean resident with an ID card. I think there's even limitations. We don't got to go so much detail, but I think they can't. They have a certain amount of companies they can be a local director of in Singapore, I believe. I don't know. If you mo that's more of a small detail, but they can't. They can't be, I think, director of like 1,000 company. I think. But uh, of course, that's always been one of the more diff diff biggest differences. Where where Hong Kong is just a company secretary, so there's no liabilities for somebody to be the company secretary, right? In Hong Kong, it's yeah. It could be all that, all, all foreigners. Yeah. And generally speaking, the cost of. Uh, Setting up a Singapore company is like three times higher than set up, setting up a Hong Kong company. And the maintenance cost is also higher than Hong Kong. Um, so you gotta, <coughs> you gotta think about this. Yeah, definitely. I think um, people gotta remember that. So the, another one I, that you just mentioned is a lot of people can, there's more investment opportunities or investment products in the Hong Kong market than in the Singapore market? Something like this, I think you just mentioned. Okay, yeah, we were talking about uh, actually some people, some business owners, entrepreneurs, or some richy people, they are considering to move money into Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, well, because uh, the political environment there is uh, more stable, but uh, I think their financial products are not diversified. Um, people move money there, but they still purchase the Hong Kong stock uh, to make money. And also in Singapore, I think their real estate market is not as exciting as uh, Hong Kong. So for those who want to invest, then, um, I think it's more like uh, it's a good environment to protect your asset. But if you want something uh, exciting, then maybe Hong Kong is actually better. Cool. I think the last part, which is probably the biggest part maybe for people in today's market is stability. I guess you have to stay would be safer in Singapore, right? That's why people have been talking to us at Unipro about maybe reincorporating to Singapore. Yes. I think, of course, there's no vandalism here, but you know, uh, it's in October 2019. There's been a lot of vandalism and, and uh, uh, other scary things, but obviously Singapore, I guess, would win the case of financial stability. Yeah. But I still think, I mean, I have my bank, my money here. Most people keep their money here, right? I mean, are people getting afraid of the financial stability in Hong Kong now? And yes. It, we're in getting towards the end of 2019 as we record this. Yeah. I mean, should people be worried? Not to be over worried, uh, but it's good to do something. But uh, I, I think, it's, it, as you can see, people are still uh, enjoying their life every day. Yeah. So no over worried, but just to get prepared. Maybe a diversification is also good. Yeah. But uh, to put to put it simple, I think it's more about flexibility versus stability. If you want more stability, maybe Singapore is a better option for you. But if you want more flexibility, especially you are doing international trading, then I still, I still think Hong Kong is a good choice. Okay, great. <clears throat> awesome, so this is cool. We took a walk and we made some video after lunch. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, so of course, we are here. I'm um, uh, Glow From Asia's official partner with Unipro. Uh, and you know, if you're interested, we're mostly still focused on, on Hong Kong Business Incorporation, right? Yes, yeah. but we are also uh, able to help you to set up Singapore companies. Okay. And also, uh, we are expanding the jurisdictions. And yeah, we've been busy. As I traveled down in Southeast Asia, you've been down there and other other jurisdictions yeah. in Asia. So, UniproHK.com for the website or um, other places. Of course, Global from Asia is a happy to be a partner with Unipro. So. Uh, maybe we'll get a last view of this okay. Ferris wheel, okay. and we'll we'll wrap up today. Think, so yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I think we're good. We are all good today. The weather is yeah. It's perfect. a beautiful day. It's almost Halloween, and uh, we're going into two. Yeah. But check this out. <laughs> I
and it's still hard to beat, right? Right? It's amazing. It's really amazing. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so we'll miss this. <laughs> thanks for okay. watching, everybody. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and also check out our Instagram at Global From Asia. Thanks again, and see you soon. E-commerce, like over eight years.